Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan McNichols, and I'm the president president of the Black Management Association. I want to take this time to thank everyone for attending this evening's fall forum about with uh, our Vice Chancellor Hayes to discuss UCI's Black Thriving Initiative. Before I turn it over to my other colleagues within the organization, I want to take this time to thank our faculty advisor, Tanya Williams Bradford, for all of her hard work of making Black, the Black Management Association a reality. With that, I'll turn it over to Jenna Boo so she, that she may introduce herself. Hello, everyone. So glad to have you all here. So my name is Jenebu. I'm the VP of Marketing and also a Quilan Femba student graduating next year in June 2021. Uh, so welcome. Uh, now I'm going to pass it on to Jordan. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Weaver. I'm the MIE program with the Pomeroy School of Business, and I am the VP of events. And the, tonight, I actually have the honor to introduce our speaker for tonight. So I'll just go ahead and get started. Douglas M. Haynes is the inaugural UCI Vice Chancellor for Equity, Diversion, Diversity and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer. He leads a comprehensive effort to establish UCI as a national leader and global model of inclusive excellence. His undergraduate degree is from Pomona College in Claremont, California, and he studied his final undergraduate year at Oxford University. He completed his PhD in modern European history at the University of California, Berkeley. He's an accomplished scholar and his most recent book is Fit to Practice, Empire, Race, Gender, and the Making of British Medicine. His appointment as vice chancellor builds, as an extensive, builds on, on an extensive record of achievement. As vice provost, for academic equity, diversity, and inclusion, Dr. Hayes elevated attention to inclusive excellence as an institutional priority. Through his interdisciplinary collaborations, he has improved faculty and graduate student diversity and gender equity. In addition, through the UCI confronting, confronting extremism, extremism excuse me, initiative, he established a national model for harnessing the research, teaching, and service mission of the university to strengthen the principles of inclusive excellence to the fortify resilience in an age of hyperpolarization. He has received numerous awards for his work on issues of equity, including from the UCI Black Staff and Faculty Association for his work to advance faculty diversity. It is an honor to welcome Vice Chancellor Douglas Hayes. Uh, start my video. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear Good. you. I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> well, first let me say thank you so much for this uh, invitation. I really appreciate it. And I'm so grateful because um, when Professor Bradford mentioned uh, the future possibility of a Black Management Association, I just was delighted. I was delighted because it just shows so much intentionality uh, uh, and leadership. Uh, and if I can contribute in a small way, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, is to sort of share a screen because of course I have some slides to share with you because I wanna describe the Black Thriving Initiative. Uh, and like the Black Management Association, this is the first year of this very ambitious and far-reaching initiative. So let me go to slides. And here we are. And so the, the Black Thriving Initiative really began as a response. And that response was the national protests against police brutality and demonstrations in support of Black lives that followed the killing of George Floyd. On May 31st, Chancellor Gilman and other university leaders really saw this as a opportunity and a responsibility of the campus to do something different. And what we chose to do different was to develop an ambitious and far-reaching initiative, something that we really haven't done before. And so 
in uh, June and August, I, I consulted broadly with many campus partners and constituents and stakeholders and mainly to listen. I, I wanted to learn more and because I realized that no one person can fully grasp the contours uh, uh, of understanding how we can serve the black community better here at UCI. And so in August, we sort of uh, published our first um, dedicated website for resources for confronting anti-blackness. And then a week later, we launched what would become three courses around anti-blackness in the United States. And then at the end of the month of August, we launched the Black Thriving Initiative and it was featured in the LA Times and has garnered uh, national attention. And in October, we sort of uh, collaborated with our academic senate in an academic senate and administrative retreat on Black Thriving. And I wanted to sort of provide these milestones because as you sort of see, Black Thriving is a combination of change management and building a movement for change here at UCI. And so what stands out about the UCI Black Thriving Initiative is that it mobilizes the entire campus not parts of it, not programs or uh, odd offices here and there, but rather it mobilized the whole university. And remember UCI is a three and a half billion dollar enterprise. It's the second largest employer in Orange County. It has a considerable capacity. But what we learn from consulting with constituency partners uh, and communities is that anti-Blackness poses an existential threat to our mission as a great public research university. And the reasons are several. It negatively impacts the community and our sense of belonging. Whether you are a faculty member, a graduate student, a postdoc, uh, an undergraduate, uh, a staff member, or an alum, we also know that anti-Blackness actually compromises the capacity of any university and UCI in particular to discover and innovate and serve precisely because it dampens participation. It contributes to blind spots. It means that we're not fully mobilizing our research and creative capacity. And third, anti-Blackness poses an existential threat because it actually contradicts our role as a public research university that serves all people. So that's the first argument. The second argument is that it's our response to a national imperative. And the chancellor was very clear in saying that we must be in this together. And we wanna be in this together by leveraging our role as a great public research university. And we want to make as an institutional priority and imperative dismantling anti-black sentiment. And I'm sure most of you agree that this is a fairly ambitious goal. And it's ambitious because it's about culture change, but quite frankly, we cannot be the university we wanna be if we do not make this an institutional priority. And so that means that it doesn't rest on the shoulders of black people, but it's distributed across the entire workforce as well as students uh, uh, and the faculty. To make this a true national imperative where we're in this together, we also have to leverage our research and creative capacity to advance understanding about the Black experience and drivers of well being. And as most of you, if not all of you, are a master's student uh, or former master's students, one thing that you would appreciate is during the course of my research in developing the BTI, when I consulted with my peers across the country at different institutions, they really couldn't answer the question how much research is being done about the Black experience? or drivers of well-being. And the final argument 
is that it builds on our momentum around inclusive excellence. We launched our action plan last January in 2020 uh, uh, to promote inclusive excellence around three pillars of community, thriving, and wellness. The initiative, the Black Thriving Initiative, also extends on our Confronting Extremism program that we launched in the wake of the racist violence in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2016. And so this particular program really is about mobilizing our research, teaching, and service mission to understand the origins, causes, modalities, manifestations of extremism as a way to better understand our society and inform how we respond as an institution and as individuals. The Black Thriving Initiative also builds on the region's principles against intolerance. They specifically call out anti-Blackness as totally inconsistent with the vision and mission of the greatest public university system in the country. And finally, it harnesses efforts we've been engaged in, in growing the number of Black faculty, as well as the improvement and success of Black undergraduates, graduate students, and professional students. And so there is a, there's a, there's a overriding set of arguments that undergird this Black Thriving Initiative, precisely because it's our response as a great public research university. And so what are the priorities? And the priorities are very important because what I talked about before was the why. Why are we engaged in a Black Thriving Initiative? The priorities describe the what. And the what consists of four priorities. The first is we must improve the campus culture by intentionally confronting anti-Blackness. Right? So instead of saying we're going to uh, strive to become an inclusive culture, which we are, we wanted to be very specific in saying we must confront anti-Blackness. And that's something that must implicate the entire enterprise. This is important precisely because we must intensify our recruitment and improve the success of Black undergraduate and graduate students in our academic and professional programs. It simply, it, uh, uh, it, it works against our efforts to recruit if our students can't graduate in the requisite amount of time. Right. And any organization, whether for profit or non for profit, is continually asking the question Are we supporting success? And so the second priority is to pay attention to focus on recruitment and success so that our students are successful and graduate whether from undergraduate or graduate or professional programs uh, 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 in, the, uh, in the time that uh, is true for most uh, uh, students. The third priority is to leverage our research and teaching mission to understand the Black experience and advance the multiple drivers of well being. I think we cannot stress this enough. We are a great research institution. And that capacity must be deployed to understand the Black experience and drivers of well being. Um, uh, uh, there's simply, we have to know and we have to do more in this regard. And finally, the fourth priority is linked to the other three. We need to extend our relations with the Black community, in part, by linking the future of UCI to the success of Black people. That is something that hasn't been articulated before. And so it's been, it's, it, we are making it very explicit. And that means we have to engage with Black communities. I'm sure most of you realize that in the state of California, uh, Black or African Americans represent less than 2 million of the total population. And in Orange County, 
60,000 out of 3 million. And so in order for us to grow our recruitments of undergraduates, graduate students and professional students, in order to mobilize a talented pool who wanna spend their careers here, we have to have a holistic, purposeful uh, strategy for engaging with black communities, not just in Orange County, but across the state and the country. And the reasons are practical. We simply cannot grow by relying exclusively on the 60,000 black people in Orange County. We have to think broadly through the state and the, and, 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 and the country. Second, in engaging with black communities, <clears throat> it's so important to demonstrate the ways in which UCI <clears throat> is adding value, is contributing to thriving black communities. If we are able to do that, I think we'll have a, 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 a greater opportunities to recruit more undergraduates, graduate students and professional students to our many academic programs. So I talked about the why, the what, uh, and this is the how. This is how we plan to create a culture where black people thrive at UCI. And it consists of three action platforms. The first is to change the culture. And I'm sure as most of you know, culture uh, eats strategy for breakfast, but it's so important that we confront that. At the heart of the change the culture is the notion that accountability begins with understanding. And for that reason, <clears throat> we launched a pledge, which I'll describe later, later, where they really provide a set of principles of accountability, right? Um, in order for each member of the campus community to build a culture of Black people thrive, we need to assume some personal responsibility for confronting anti-Blackness. We have been advancing that through a series or suite of courses entitled Anti-Blackness in the United States. And I'll describe those a little later, but the idea behind the pledge principles of accountability and these courses is that we want to bring people into the conversation. We want to establish a common vocabulary about what anti-blackness is, right? So that people have a better context for understanding. Third, we're developing a scorecard to sort of track what is the culture and climate like in our academic and non-academic programs, right? So that we are able to sort of identify early rather than later areas where we need to improve. The fourth area to change the culture is the relationship of the UCI Police Department with black communities on campus. And so the chancellor announced in August his endorsement of a bottom-up review of the UCI Police Department, which is ongoing now. Uh, the Public Safety Advisory Council is overseeing that. They've also engaged an external evaluator. The chancellor is waiting for the report and recommendations, which I believe will be uh, made available towards the end of the quarter. But the point is, is that we are focusing on these different aspects so that we change the culture to bring the campus into alignment with the principles of inclusive excellence. I want to move to the second action uh, platform and that is leverage the mission by advancing understanding about the black experience and drivers of well-being. And again, it's really about mobilizing the research and creative capacity of the, of the campus. And so last month, the provost announced a hiring program, uh, 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 a cluster hiring program for the Black Thriving Initiative. We intend to hire 10 faculty researchers 
whose research really advances the black understanding of black experience and drivers of well being. That's across the campus. This is in addition to our existing hiring programs. And I want to add that last year, we hired a record number of black faculty 13. No campus in the entire UC system has ever done that before. And so we're optimistic that with this hiring program for the Black Thriving Initiative, together with our existing hiring programs, we're going to continue to hire Black faculty year over year. Later uh, in the academic year, we're going to be announcing what's called the Inclusive Excellence Term Chairs Program. And this is for our incumbent faculty. And so every three years, there'll be a dedicated theme for which we will recognize the distinguished contributions of faculty in research, teaching, and service that relates to the theme. The inaugural theme will be Black Thriving. And so we're going to be awarding five chairs to five faculty whose research, teaching, and service really advance that theme. The incumbents of each chair will receive $30,000 a year for three years. And so as you can imagine, when you look at the cluster hiring program together with the term chair program, the campus is investing in Black thriving. Third, we'll be rolling out an announcement for the Black Thriving Institute, which will really serve as a venue to mobilize research activity around understanding anti-Blackness, racial justice, and slavery. It will be an interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary institute, in part because we have so many talented and accomplished scholars who are working in this space by having this institute, we want to elevate attention to the subject matter, to their research activity, while also reaching out to other scholars, uh, researchers, uh, graduate students, and professional students to participate in a wide range of programs. I can't stress enough that an important part of leveraging the mission to create a thriving culture has to include student success in ways that I referred to when I was describing the, the priorities. And so that means that all faculty together with academic units must focus attention on change in creating inclusive pedagogical spaces for Black students to thrive. And finally, we can't be committed to a black thriving culture without our career staff. And for that reason, we are developing a pilot leadership development program. As probably most of you know, about 65% of our workforce are women. And often that's where we find our diversity. And we wanna be sure that we're creating a transparent landscape for them to assume increasingly uh, um, responsible positions in management, ex as well as executive leadership. Uh, we've applied for a $10 million grant to support this pilot. We've been successful during the first stage of the review, and we're optimistic about the next stage. But whether or not we're funded externally, we're going to pilot this here at UCI. The third and final action platform is to engage communities by linking UCI to Black success. And that involves mobilizing the various institutions of civil society in Orange County so that we can work together. The, the second is to create a speakers bureau to tell our story, to communicate the Black Thriving Initiative and the ways in which UCI is connecting its future to Black success. One early example of this is working with the admissions office because uh, we're now in the application season. And um, we're going to be gearing up by identifying faculty and other interested individuals to really serve as speakers uh, in a variety of venues, both in the context of admissions, but others as well. But the idea is to really help people rediscover Orange County that there are Black people in Orange County, 
that they're successful black people in Orange County, that Orange County is home to many uh, organizations and businesses, and above all, it's home to UCI. The final element is fundraising. And this is important because fundraising on a symbolic and practical level really communicates to people that the institution is investing in them. And so for that reason, we're gonna be launching a thriving scholarship program that really will reward uh, newly admitted uh, first year transfer students and increasingly uh, professional and our uh, graduate students for contributing to uh, promoting black thriving communities. These communities may be in Orange County, the state of California across the country. They can be urban, rural, uh, suburban. But the idea is that we want to acknowledge those contributions precisely because UCI is committed to thriving black communities. And so I wanna briefly summarize and, and, and focus up on some of these elements. So I wanna go back to culture change. This is a description of the three courses that we uh, launched uh, that are currently in progress now. And so each quarter we have two sessions. And in each session, we have each three, uh, three of these courses. And so, oops, my, uh, the first course focuses on the black protest tradition where we're answering the question, why are black people protesting in the streets? The second, looks at the structures and mechanisms that devalue black people. And we answer the question, why is it necessary to protest that black lives matter in the 21st century? And the final course is entitled moving beyond a personal commitment to diversity, becoming an ally. And so right now enrollments have been very gratifying and so each session, and there's two sessions each quarter, well over 250 people have enrolled in these five week courses that include robust reading and viewing materials, as well as sustained hour long conversations that are moderated by me. And I like to think that people are getting a lot of value out of these courses it's a very important way for people to understand what we mean by anti-Blackness and how they can contribute to creating a uh, culture where Black people thrive. Let's see here. The next area in terms of culture change is that we launched a pledge campaign where we're asking people to pledge to do four things. One is to acknowledge anti-Blackness. The second is to understand one's relationship to anti-Black micro and macro aggressions. The third is to recognize the uncredited labor that Black people expend to manage the effects of unconscious and conscious acts of bias, prejudice, and bigotry. And finally, to confront anti-Blackness and build a thriving culture for Black people. At first sight, these expectations seem obvious. But if you get a chance to attend our courses, you'll see that it takes work. And I think many of the people who are enrolled in these courses are doing the work to understand what anti-Blackness is to acknowledge it. That they're doing the work to understand what is a microaggression, right? And how to interrupt them. And third, to appreciate what it means to be black in America, where we are continually having to reconcile contradictions. And fourth, that people are doing the work to understand what confronting anti-blackness means, that you, you can't have a thriving culture for black people without confronting anti-Blackness. I wanna briefly describe 
um, some of our faculty focus investments. I mentioned earlier that we launched the Black Thriving Initiative Cluster Hiring Call. The deadline for that is January 6th, but each cluster consists of three faculty positions, an early mid-career scholar, and each cluster will receive $150,000 over three years. And the clusters um, will be, uh, will uh, re reflect uh, inter-school collaboration and they'll work with my office to advance the Black Thriving Initiative. And so when you look at this, there's 10 faculty positions and we'll be investing you know, uh, $500,000 on top of the regular startup for these positions. The final area for faculty investment that I mentioned is the term chair program. And again, the, for the inaugural theme will be Black Thriving. Each of the five incumbent faculty will receive $30,000 a year for three years. That's $90,000 times five. So it's a substantial investment. The nominations will originate in academic units from their deans, and where it's open to all campus units, uh, arts and the College of Health Sciences, the Mirage School, uh, the Bren School, the School of Physical Sciences, Biological Sciences, Humanities, Social Ecology, Social Sciences, Nursing, Pharmaceutical Sciences, a population health and medicine. I'm trying to make the point that we want to mobilize the entire campus. The, 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 this is the second to last slide. And here's a, a breakdown of that proposal that we've submitted. That's about diversifying the C-suite at the University of California. And I want to make a pitch here. I realize that as MBA students and recipients of MBAs, you have plans for your career that will take you far and wide uh, to amazing places. But I also want you to think about working at UCI or the University of California. There are executive leadership positions. There are senior management positions that require the skills and competencies and credentials of an MBA. And so what we're doing at this uh, project to diversify the C-suite is we're matching career staff with senior management leaders. And the idea is to sort of partner in cohorts of 60 fellows with their executive sponsors for job shadowing, project leadership, to institutionalize equitable recruitment and promotion practices, and to guide fellows in learning experiences, content development, and career building projects. And the final slide is just a quick overview that this is a framework. The Black Thriving Initiative is a framework. And what's been so gratifying is how different parts of the campus are responding. The Academic uh, Senate, the deans of various schools are developing their own school-specific initiatives. Our staff assembly, which is the representative body for non-representative staff, as well as human resources, student government. And of course, I want to pause for a moment to focus on the Center for the Neurobiology of Learning and Memory. They have formed a grassroots dismantling systemic racism working groups. And it's just been pretty remarkable. They mobilized nearly 300 people, faculty, postdocs, graduate students, undergraduates, and staff to dismantle racism through a wide range of activities. And so this is the Black Thriving Initiative. It is indeed a start. Um, uh, we're going to grow as this initiative grows. But I wanted to share that with you. And I want to thank you for your time and attention. And I'm quite happy to answer questions about the Black Thriving Initiative if you have them.